Yo, what's up? This is the video you guys have been waiting for. The charging video with the Nissan Leaf, yes. So a little background here. Um, I went to Dumbos to the Eon charger. This is the only Eon charger I know of in Norway. And the Eon is uh, more common in other countries like Sweden and Denmark. But anyway, they have 200 amp big black fat cable. Yes, Chalamo. So um, Chalamo has at least I know of two standards. You have the Chalamo version one, which is the most common one everywhere. Uh, they use 125 amp. And I think there's a weird variant, a bastard variant of that Chalamo that uh, some other places like the Coppola, like BKK, they have a, a high power charger with, uh, you can get CCS, get maybe 75, 100 kilowatt from it. And they also have a, a Chalamo plug. Uh, but and that one uh, delivers 135 amp uh, slightly faster but that's not enough for us we need the 200 amp uh, the 200 amp is Chalamo version 2 and actually by specification the Chalamo version 2 supports 400 amp but the one I tested was only 200 amp so peak power was 72 kilowatts so let's roll the tape shall we okay I have to explain here Top left is Leaf, uh, the Leaf at Dombos, uh, and also right next to it we have Leaf Spy. And then on the top right, that's uh, the same Leaf, but on, on the, at 50 kilowatt fast charger, it was a different day. And then the blue screen, that one is the Zoe. And then the bottom right is the East Soul. So yes, now we have all the cars here. Uh, why do I compare these cars? Well, um, the Leaf has similar range as the, the Zoe even though Zoe has smaller battery because Zoe is more efficient. And then, but the Leaf has similar battery size as the Esol, and si well, but the Esol has more range and Esol has after cooling and all that. But you see that uh, the Leaf uh, charging at the, this Eon charger can actually kind of keep up with, uh, with uh, Esol, but then um, the, the Zoe is left in the dust pretty much, yeah. Just, just gonna, just gonna show you that you know, Zoe is capped at 125 amp, which is equivalent to you know CCS. I mean, uh, Chalamo version one, so it doesn't charge much faster than about 45, 46 kilowatt. That's it, and even, even a charging session uh, at with a Leaf. Yeah, you see, the Leaf is getting 44, 45 kilowatt at the 50 kilowatt fast charger. So already over there, it's getting good speed. But there's one thing I want to point out, which is that when you charge it at 200 amp, uh, the heat buildup is greater so I forgot to mention it you can just go back if you want to I started at the exact same temperature on both these two charging sessions because I want to see the the temperature difference and um, you can't compare them directly right now because they are different state of charge but I saw when you match the same state of charge that the temperature difference was around four to five degrees Celsius so it means that uh, you charge faster but you also build up more heat but uh, one advantage or whatever is that um, uh, okay when you charge fast uh, 200 amp charger you will um, you will heat up the battery more when you use N uh, but then the diff between uh, outside temperature and the battery pack is greater and then it means that the rate of passive cooling once you start driving is greater so if we would drive both cars if we charge both cars to 90 percent you know um, and then start driving uh, by the end uh, when we need to charge again then I just got feeling I think that the diff in temperature might just be two degrees maybe let's say one to two degrees Celsius just my assumption yes but you know that Assumption is a mother of all fuck-ups. <laughs> no, but um, so anyway, yes, uh, let's just continue here. So um, not much going on, but uh, you already see now that um, um, the ESOL also started trotting. It only maintained uh, 73, 75 kilowatt up until 57%. And now it's throttling also. But the uh, LEAF is actually keeping a fairly good uh, flat-ish flat charging curve. Um, so I'm not sure what to say, uh, you know, I can just talk forever. This is, I, I mainly make this video just so you guys can use the, these data as a reference and you can you can look at them and, and analyze them and figure out yourself what, yeah. Um, but what else is there to say? Okay, um, yeah, there, w w there's one thing I want to point out, which is that uh, once these cars go high, high enough, once they pass 80%, you will see that Leaf is still having a fairly flat charging curve. Um, the other guys, they will start flattening out. Um, 
Well, I'm not sure what to say about uh, Zoe. Zoe is already throttling. You see, or, <laughs> that's kind of uh, disappointing. Already at already at 60 percent, it start throttling. You can see the number of amps. It's not 125 anymore. I would like to see the Zoe battery act more like the um, the MG battery, where it goes flat all the way to 80 percent and then it throttles. But then it will actually do it better in this test. Uh, so that is a bit disappointing. Uh, yeah, okay, yeah, by the way, uh, Seoul is now having the second breakpoint uh, at 73%. So now it's down to 36 kilowatt. Uh, but the Leaf has a pretty massive lead here. So, um, but can they be compared directly? A Leaf versus uh, eSoul? Well, the thing about it is, so Leaf is actually faster here, you see? Uh, even though the peak power wasn't that long, but, but it's just that the Leaf had a flatter curve than uh, the Esol, but the Esol has more range. So in a straight up race, I still think that the Esol might win, or at least it would be neck on deck until uh, the Leaf start rapid gating. But that wouldn't happen until after you know uh, uh, 300. Uh, let's say no, actually more 500 to 700 kilometers when Leaf rapid gates then. Yeah, but then, of course, in the straight up race, uh, the Leaf couldn't drive that fast, otherwise it would rapid get faster, but the, the ESO would just hammer it, yeah, so it depends on, uh, if you're driving in Norway, then the Leaf is actually perfectly fine. Okay, by the way, yes, Leaf is about to end, <laughs> it, it finished there, 90%, yeah. Um, and now you see that, uh, that I was talking about, that the Leaf has a very flat curve on the top there, so it's still, when it... Yeah, you can see on the other one, by the way, yes, it's still running at 81, 82% now. Um, that we are still getting 36, 37 kilowatt, whereas the other ones are down to 25 kilowatt. But on the other hand, how often do you have to charge to 90%? Uh, it depends. Uh, if you're in a rush, I would recommend charging to about 80%. But um, with a Leaf, it's actually not too big deal to charge to 90% because I think for the most part, you will be riding on uh, about 40, 45 kilowatt anyway. So you actually want to charge to 90% uh, most of the time with the Leaf uh, because then you, you you don't have to take too, too many charging stops. So so actually right now, this, this shows the strength of the Leaf at least is that it has good range. It has a fairly flat charging curve. And as long as you drive between Oslo and Bergen, Oslo, or let's say 500 kilometers, then the Leaf will do it just fine until the rapid gates. But the rapid gate is not that bad with the new battery. You guys can see the 1000 kilometer challenge and you figure out when it start rapid gating. From there, it's just a down spiral. But as long as it doesn't rapid gate that bad, then it's still okay. Okay, all the cars, well, well, did they finish it? Uh, no, what the heck? We're still okay. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. They're all finished now. So uh, What should I say then? Um, uh, interesting interesting for me to see because you know up until now I assume that it was pointless to charge at uh, at uh, What they were 100 kilowatt because it would just overheat but uh, the difference in time Okay, I didn't point out it's kind of hard to see but um, uh, the the leaf at 200 amp was actually about 12 minutes faster, uh, depending on how high you charge. It was 12 minutes in the beginning uh, up until up until about 70 percent, but then towards the end they were kind of equal. And actually towards the end, the 50 kilowatt charging session was a little bit faster. I don't know why. Uh, maybe because of overheating or something. Uh, so in the end, if you go to 90 percent, we have 10 minute difference. So, so. Are you willing to pay extra uh, on Eon Charger to save 10, uh, 10 12 minutes? I'm not sure. Uh, I, wouldn't, I wouldn't pay extra to save that time. Um, then I would just charge at 50 kilowatt because I kind of know that it will build up more heat. But if the price is the same and if I'm not driving too far, uh, then I would definitely use uh, the 200 amp charger. But uh, you guys might be wondering why didn't we see 100 kilowatt? Because that's what uh, that's what's advertised by Nissan. Well, to obtain 100 kilowatt, you need about 285 amp. So, like I mentioned, the the Chalimo standard uh, Chalimo version two supports up to 400 amp. 
but this charger was only equipped with 200 amp uh, i don't know how that whatever that equipment looks like if you have 400 amp maybe it's water cool maybe it's super fat but uh yeah so i this is the highest i've seen i, I don't think anyone else has gotten that much higher like i haven't seen 80 kilowatt uh so from what i've heard from others 200 amp is the fattest cable around Oslo, I'm sorry, ar around Europe. Maybe you have to go to Japan to find some 400 amp or at least 300 amp uh, cables that can deal with this. So, uh, and then, but on the other hand, yes, <laughs> if we find, you know, if we find a place with the 400 amp cable, then you can only imagine the temperature increase if you charge at 100 kilowatt. And then also how long do you get 100 kilowatt and so on. Uh, so for now, my impression after seeing this, after experiencing this, is that I would definitely go for the 200 amp if I had the opportunity, even though the temperature gain is higher. Yes, it just what they say. What do they say again in Norwegian? PC books of a whole warm. Yeah, which means pee in the pants to keep yourself warm. Yeah, <laughs> yeah, dumb and dumber. Okay. Anyway, that's gonna be it for now. I hope you guys enjoy this video. As always, thank you for watching and talk to you later.